Well, joining us now to give us some context on this new variant, infectious disease specialist Dr. Isaac Bogosh and Dr. Susie Hoda, both in Toronto. And Dr. Hoda, let me start with you. How concerned are you with this news? I mean, it's very worrisome. Uh, I know it's early days and we don't have a lot of information and we're going to have to watch very closely what does develop in the next few days. But so far, what it looks like, at least from South Africa, is it's rapidly taken over Delta. And the Delta variant, we're all still struggling with in terms of transmission. So if this is more transmissible, then this new variant is definitely a concern to be watching. The other question is, just how much of immune evasion, which is kind of the ability of these um, these variants to either sort of resist the effects of vaccines and also result in reinfections, just how much of that is going to come out of this variant? Um, there are some suggestions because there are a large number of mutations around the targets that the vaccines really kind of focus on, that there may be a, a real problem with vaccine effectiveness. We don't know yet. We're just going to have to see. And Dr. Bogosh, you touched on this earlier in the program, but as you were reading through the materials today, I guess, the reports on this, as obviously Dr. Hoda was as well, but, but what sort of questions does this raise for you? Yeah, I think the big question is, to what extent is this more transmissible than Delta, if at all? And how much of what we are seeing now is related to sampling error or to this being truly more transmissible. I'd also love to know the clinical impact of this. Does this potentially cause more significant illness versus Delta? And again, like Dr. Hoda said, it, does this uh, have any degree of immune evasion? And if so, to what extent versus um, you know, the, the, the virus and, uh, and how well will our vaccines hold up against us? I think one positive takeaway point is that it would be extremely unusual for the vaccines to be rendered useless with uh, a mutation or even several mutations like this. So it's even if there does seem to be a chipping away at the effectiveness of vaccines, it'll likely be a gradual chipping away. And the vaccines will still likely confer very significant protection, especially against more severe infections. That's speculation on my part. Obviously, these are studies that have to be uh, undertaken. Uh, but I, I think that we'll probably see that in the coming days and weeks ahead. And, and Dr. Bogart, speaking of vaccines, uh, Moderna uh, issued a news release today, and one of the things they talked about is that they're studying two multivalent booster candidates in the clinic that were designed to anticipate situations such as those that have emerged with the Omicron variant. Um, what's your reaction to that? Fantastic. I mean, uh, there's going to be a time where we're going to need to pull the trigger on new vaccines and updated vaccines. We're still using vaccines that are really designed toward the original virus that emerged from Wuhan, China, close to two years ago. And obviously, the virus has changed significantly since then. If there truly is immune evasion, we will need an updated uh, version of the vaccine. Unfortunately, with the mRNA technology, you're able to do that very, very quickly. Dr. Hoda, we're seeing case numbers rise in various provinces and, uh, you know, a, sort of a, this residual level of anxiety that a lot of people have during the fourth wave and now this new news about the variant. So I, I just wonder in terms of kind of practical real world advice, what should we be doing differently, if anything, now? I'm not sure it's different, but I think our message about trying to improve on vaccine uptake is, is more important than ever now. Um, you know, I completely agree with what Dr. Bogosh has said, that it's really unlikely that the vaccines are going to be completely useless against this variant. And, you know, we still have our own you know, issues with Delta transmission, et cetera. I think vaccination is really one of the most important strategies we can put into place. And this doesn't just apply to us. It applies globally. So whatever we can do to try and improve vaccine uptake across the world is going to benefit us all. Um, so that's a really big part of it. The, the next things are public health measures do work. We know that they're blind to variant types. And if we run into problems with the case counts really going up and transmission going rampant, we can use, you know, the strategies we've used before. It may mean that we have to slow down reopening plans or alter reopening plans. And we just have to watch and tailor according to what's happening. So these are the two main things. I'll say the other things that are really important are um, highlighted by this case. The fact that in South Africa, they had such excellent genomic surveillance that they caught all this rather quickly and had a lot of information to share. 
we need to make sure that we're in a position that we can actually detect these kinds of problems in Canada really well and communicate them out and focus, you know, containment around that. And and Dr. Bogarsh, talk to us a little bit more about something Dr. Hoda brought up, and it's often described as, as vaccine equity. I know a lot of doctors have been talking about this throughout. How do we how do we achieve that? How do we persuade rich countries like Canada to to help uh, distribute vaccines around the world? The short-term solutions, sadly, are charitable. We have to give vaccines to lower-income countries. We have to support programs like the COVAX program to help support vaccine equity. But the more meaningful longer-term solutions are really enabling lower-income countries to manufacture vaccines, to talk about patents and data sharing so that people can actually produce vaccines in those settings. They don't have to be reliant on charitable donations. One other point that Dr. Hoda brought up that I thought was fantastic is the data sharing. And we had South African scientists and scientists from Botswana identify this variant and share this variant data very quickly with the international community. And that's why we're all talking about it today. The answer to this is to not punish people for sharing data by issuing travel bans. Can you imagine the, uh, would anyone else be so inclined to share data of a variant that emerges in their country if the response to that is, oh, we're going to start banning travel to them? And we know these policies are not that effective in the first place. I think we could be doing a lot more to be supporting low-income countries, not just with vaccine equity, but also with supporting them through these processes when a variant emerges there. Dr. Hoda, literally less than 30 seconds uh, for this last uh, question and answer, but there's so much worry around the world today. Uh, is this going to make you sleep, uh, going to make sleep more difficult for you tonight? You know, I, I think the most important thing for us to do is watch what happens in the next few days. It's not time to panic on this. Um, you know, we've been through new variants before, but let's keep our attention on this and, uh, and try to modify things according to what we learn. All right. Well, as always, thanks to both of you for uh, giving us your time tonight. My pleasure. Thank you.